Welcome back to yet another session of Learning Simplified. In this session, we are going to understand what an account aggregator is and how it functions. So let's try to understand with the help of a use case. So there you are with the mobile app of IDFC First Bank and you want to find your account balance. That's pretty easy. You just go into the app, authenticate yourself and you will be able to get the IDFC account balance. Now you also have accounts in different banks like Canberra, ICICI and HDFC. So how do you check the balance of these three banks? Obviously one way is to go and log into the individual apps of these banks or the other way is to use an account aggregator. Now account aggregator is an intermediary which helps in pulling all the balances from the different banks and show you in this app. Obviously provided IDFC have signed up with an account aggregator. These three banks are participants to the account aggregator. And of course, you have given your consent to share the data. So if these three things are in place, you will be able to see all the three account balances in your IDFC First Banks app. So in this whole cycle, you have the financial information providers because they are the ones which provides information and the financial information user because they use this information which is given by the provider. Let's take another use case to help understand a bit further. So now you're a user, you approach uh, uh, an NBFC like ours for a loan. Now obviously the bank would like to want uh, further information related to your bank accounts in other banks or your uh, mutual fund statements and so on. So one way could be that you give uh, physical copies of them as proofs or the other way is to use an account aggregator service. So if you have given consent, then AWAS will be able to use with the help of account aggregator, check your balance in ICICI bank, your insurance with LIC or your mutual fund folios with HDFC. Now this is just an example. Obviously, there are much more stakeholders involved. So this is a beautiful example of a use case where an account aggregator helps gives all the information to a lender. So it's speeding, speeding up the lending process. So as usual, the financial information user is Avas. The providers are LIC, ICICI and HDFC in this case. So what kind of information can be shared? It could be savings and current account, balances, statements, fixed deposits, mutual fund folios, insurance policies, pension funds, and a lot more. Who are the other stakeholders? Obviously the RBI because RBI regrets the account aggregators and there are quite a few in India. They ensure data security and consumer production. And the Sahamati Trust, which is a non-profit organization, they help manage this infrastructure and the governance of the AA system. Now the IT wing of the Reserve Bank of India helps in publishing all the open banking APIs which helps in connecting the user and the provider. So uh, this is a list of uh, account aggregators. This is not a comprehensive list but these are the main ones Anumati uh, which is for IDFC and then quite a few other ones as well and these are the sandbox URLs. The sandbox is nothing but a testing system where you can log into and then um, test your APIs as a user or a provider. So all the APIs are documented in the RBI's IT uh, website. So you have the APIs which will be used by the account aggregator, the provider and the user. So how does the uh, API flow look like? Now these are the three stakeholders, the FI user, provider, account aggregator and then the end user. So when a user requests for data first, he has to ask for consent. Account aggregator being the fiduciary, it acts as a broker between the user and the FI user and the end user. So it gets the consent from the end user. The FI user then requests for the data. In this case, let's assume that they are asking for an account balance uh, from another provider. The same is being passed to the FI provider. FI provider gives the response back. Now, important thing to know is that these are all open, a, open, open APIs because they are uh, on the public internet and they are obviously encrypted heavily um, because of the security and the privacy which is involved in the sensitive nature of the data.
this API, the request API is not a synchronous one. It's an asynchronous API call to the provider. And then once the provider gets the data from its internal system, it notifies back and the data is passed on to the FI user. So the channel is encrypted, the data is encrypted, your data is completely secure. And obviously this account aggregator acts as a postman. It does not store any data within itself. It just is a pass by mechanism. So who are those FI providers? Uh, uh, they could be uh, asset management companies um, like mutual funds regulated by the SEBI. You have a host of banks, private banks, public sector banks, foreign banks, cooperative banks, housing finance bank. You could have cooperative banks and uh, probably an FI like um, uh, SIDBI as well, Grameen banks, uh, depositories and uh, CRAs like CAMS, KFINS, GST network and uh, health insurers like ACO, Neva, Bupa, etc. What the users? Now there are a lot more users. Uh, the users, uh, apart from the banks which were listed in the previous slide, there are a few host of other users who are typically users and not providers by the very nature of their service. They could be AIFs, uh, alternative investment funds, insurance brokers like Policy Bazaar, MFIs, uh, which are the microfinance institutes, life or non-life insurance. And a very important one is the RIAs and stockbrokers. RIAs are the investment advisors, stockbrokers like Angel Broking and Zeroda. So what are the principles of AA? Now it could be summarized as O, open standards, because all of them follow open APIs, revocable. So the consent given by the end user is for a specific period and for specific financial institutions and they can revoke it at any point of time. It's not indefinite. The access which the user gives is granular, which means they can actually specify whether they are giving access to a statement or to a specific balance or so on. Everything is auditable. All the request response is audited and uh, time stamped in the data stores of the account aggregator. The data itself is not stored, obviously. Notice, so whenever the uh, provider provides information, the end user gets notified that such and such data has been shared. So there's complete uh, uh, transparency. And as I mentioned earlier, it is completely secured. The channel is secured, the data is secured. Um, so there's no uh, issue related to privacy of the data. So how do you register as an FI? First important thing is that if you want to become a user or provider, you need to get regulated either by SEBI or RBI. So once you do that, you have to implement the RBI's uh, API specification, which I spoke about, and all the callback functions. So these are there and tested. You'll have to use the account aggregator's sandbox. So for example, you're taking Anumati as the ag account aggregator to test with their sandbox APIs. So once it's done, you will get a certificate by um, Samati Empaneled Auditor, and then you can hook on uh, to the registry and tell everybody that you're live on the AA ecosystem. So by now you would have understood the advantages of AA. It eliminates the need of physical documents. You don't need to visit the office of individual financial institutes and get the physical documents. You can uh, empower your uh, FI user to get the data from the FI providers. So it gives a consolidated view of all financial data, very useful for RIAs uh, who want a 360 degree view of uh, your data. And in the context of uh, the unified lending interface, ULI, which is coming up, it gives an improved credit and uh, loan assessment. So your loan approvals, etc., can be done in a Jiffy because everything is now digital. This gave you a good understanding about uh, how the um, the the AA functionality works and what are the details behind the hood. Thank you.